In the past on this channel, I've demonstrated a number of musical projects that I've created. Today, I want to launch a new series, Musical Hacks. In this series, what I want to do is to look at musical technologies and different creative ways that we can use them. A wide variety of topics, everything from looking at the hardware and how you might create circuit boards and soldering, etc., software, how you might program them, and just and also a particular projects that you might find interesting to do. Today, I want to look at the hardware platforms available. There's a wide variety of choice, and people ask me which is the best. The reality is they each have their own merits. So today what I want to do is to have a look at an overview of where we might use each of them and why. Over the coming weeks, then I want to do projects with each of them to actually show how they might be used. If you've got some ideas for projects, put them in the comments below. Um, if you want to hear about when these videos become available, obviously subscribe and hit the notification bell. So there's quite a variety of platforms that we can use for our projects. Um, and they all have their own strengths and weaknesses. Not one is better than the other. So over the weeks, I'm going to look at each of them in turn. I'm also going to look at the programming environments, um, how you can connect them up via hardware, and go into all sorts of projects with them. But first of all, let's just have a quick overview of all of them. So we first of all start with the smallest of the lot, which is the microcontroller units. And these are things like Arduinos and TCs. Now these are very cheap. You'll pick them up for 20 euros or so. They have analog inputs, they have digital um, input and outputs, and they also have some um, audio capability. Now obviously you're just basically getting a bare board at this point. Now they don't have as much CPU power or RAM as the other solutions we're going to look at, but they have an advantage that they are completely dedicated to the task at hand, to your application, to your patch, which are the others we're going to see is going to be running operating systems. So that takes away from their power. So these are very powerful. One point to note with these, though, is that you will need a computer to program them. There's no real ability to program on these. You can't connect a display or anything. The next step up from these are boards that actually start to have audio hardware on them. Because those don't have any inputs or outputs, you have to wire everything up yourself. So something like the Axolotti. The Axolotti is designed for everybody, for musicians. The Arduinos you tend to have to code using C++ or whatever, so they're quite difficult to get into. Whereas Axolotti you program with a visual programming language. The other thing is, as we said, you can now see that we have audio inputs and audio outputs. We even have MIDI on this board, uh, an SD card, and it also supports USB MIDI. So out of the box, you're able to get things running much quicker. Now, like the Arduinos, this just looks like a, a bare board. How would I use this? Well, with both cases, the idea is you're going to add things to them. Now, the first thing you might do is to put them in a case so that we don't have bare electronics sitting on your desk. After a case, the next thing we start to want to do is to add some hands-on control. So this was actually produced by Tom Whitwell. Um, this is an extension to the Axolotl you can see here, but it has some potentiometers already wired up, has a joystick, um, and some buttons and some LEDs. These are all things that you can connect yourself quite happily to either the Arduinos or to the Axolotl. Or you might build something like this. This is a uh, plastic enclosure. Again, we've added potentiometers. We've got a small display and some buttons and things. Again, inside here happens to be an Axolotl, but you could be using an Arduino. So the next step up from the MCUs are single ball computers. Now, the most well-known one of those is something like a Raspberry Pi. Now, I have to point out that the Raspberry Pi's audio quality is very poor. Um, almost certainly, if you want to include one of these in your project, you're going to want to use either an audio interface via USB 
Or more commonly, what people do is they add capes like this one, which is a hi-fi berry, which gives you an audio interface on the actual board. An alternative that you've seen on my channel is a Pi Sound, which is very similar, but also supports MIDI. There are, however, alternatives to the Raspberry Pi. You've got also something I've featured on my channel before, which is the Bella. Now this is actually using a Beagle Bone Black single board computer. Um, and they produce this extra header. Now, the nice thing about Bella is that they actually provide low latency audio and also analog inputs and outputs as well as digital. So it becomes much easier to integrate this into your project, as I'll show in later episodes. Now, Raspberry Pi and Bella are single board computers. That means that they run an operating system. So this does have some overhead, but also it means that we can use actually general purpose applications. Uh, they tend to be running on Linux. And in both instances, you could do things like create patches in Pure Data or in Super Collider, as we will see in future episodes. Also, in the case of the Raspberry Pi, this also has the ability to connect it to a TV or whatever. So you can actually program your, your patches on this computer directly. You don't need another computer. The next step up is a programmable musical instrument. Now, these are very similar to the Raspberry Pis, etc. But the difference is that someone has already done the work of creating an environment to launch patches. Perhaps there are already patches available and that kind of thing. Fates. This is actually a mono norns clone, um, which is basically a Raspberry Pi um, with a display and some encoders. So with mono norns, you can power this up, you can download applications that other people have developed. It actually is programmed using Super Collider and Lua, um, and you can create your own. Uh, you've got all the audio hardware to go. It's a one-stop shop. The other thing that's been featured on my channel a lot, and that people know I like, is the organelle. Now, why I like the organelle is that this really is a musical instrument, because at this point now we have some keys that we can actually play, like this one happens to have a, a speaker, etc. But again, we can code it. So we can download patches and just use other people's patches like a normal synthesizer, or we can program it ourselves with Pure Data or Super Collider. Um, also, again, like the Raspberry Pi, it has a monitor output, so you can again connect up a keyboard and uh, a monitor and you can program on this itself. Then finally, of course, let's not forget our humble laptop. Lots of people have these. Um, there's no reason to buy extra hardware if you don't want to. You can code and program on your laptop. Again, things like Pure Data and Super Collider are free and downloadable. Um, and it's a great way to get into DSP programming. There's a wide variety of choice. And it all depends what your goal is. If you need something that's going to take up a lot of processing power, perhaps your laptop is the best idea. If you want something that's actually a musical instrument and self-contained and you don't want to build hardware, then something like the organelle makes sense. If, however, you want to create your own instrument, or if you need a cheap solution for something, then perhaps the Arduino. You can quite easily add a user interface to it, if necessary, or perhaps you just put it in a box. If it's a MIDI processor, perhaps it doesn't need any buttons. Or perhaps you have something more specialised. Perhaps you want to have something incorporated into your Eurorack system. This is actually Bella inside the Eurorack module, so completely programmable. There are other Eurorack modules that could be reprogrammed, things like Qubit Nebulae. It all comes down to what do you want. Over the next few weeks, what I'm going to do is explore these in detail. I'm going to show you a few projects and how you can build them. I'm going to look at the programming environments, and I'm also going to look at how you connect hardware and things to these devices. But if you have some other ideas, 
for what you'd like to see, please subscribe. Um, and make sure you click on the notification bell so you can actually hear when the new episodes come out. Thank you.